Scott, 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 Scott. I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, it took turning, me a minute to uh, to get you plugged in here. We're turning you up. Welcome. Thank you. We were we were just starting with a little with a little uh, introduction, Scott. And uh, our insurance carrier has come back and said two things. Number one, they're recommending we dissolve the 501c3, and number two, the select board should appoint the chief and. What I had discussed previously with with Eric and Jeff is that the way it would go, which is the same way it goes with our other sub organizations, is the fire department would recommend and then we would appoint. In terms of the 501c3, my clear memory was Rob Halpert told us that they could keep their 501c3 as long as it was just using used for fundraising activities and not for not for operations mm -hmm. and you would not reflect the money that the town gives to the fire department to the 501c3 it would just be money that right. comes in either from your invested funds or from contributions right and we can confirm that with him but i don't see why that should be a problem we're not it's a it's a separate it's a separate 501c3 just for fundraising purposes for the benefit of the fire department. Yeah, they may not want to call it the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. That's the only thing. Well, they could it's call it the Middlesex Volunteer Fire, fire Department Fund or who knows what they're calling yeah. yeah. the, other, the other thing you could do is we can, like we do with all of our other funds for the different committees, we could set up your own account within our chart of accounts. So if you had any fundraising activity, money, or anything like that, it could go into that account. I mean, we do it for the cemetery, the planning commission, conservation commission. So we could do the same thing for the fire department. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have to keep any books. Um, that's, you know, that's- I would, think, I would think ultimately that would be a, a better way to go. Why? Why? Keep right. the other thing. Seems like it would be easier, more straightforward. But, but anyway, we don't need to. We well, don't need to make that decision tonight. tonight. If you dissolve the 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 five hundred one c three, who who the members of the fire department are part of, then what happens to the members? Because we're not town employees. We're not part of our own fire department fund. What so why do you say? Why do you say they're part of it? They don't. It's the fire department that owns the money, not them, right? Well, but but the members make up the fire department. And so if, if you do away with that, which essentially does away with that part of the fire department, and the town has the fire department, but the town where the members are not the employees of the town, how do they be fire department members? It's still a volunteer. They're volunteer, they're they're volunteer fire, fire department members. I don't know. Yeah. We can we can sort this out, whatever it is. Rob said, and this was back some months ago, but he was he was clear that he didn't see any any problem with with keeping it. So let's let's put that as a as a sidebar issue. I don't want that to be the problem that upsets the apple cart. I mean, we are not in any way, it's not a land, it would not be a land grab by the town grabbing fire department money. I guess the other the other question would be if it was in a town fund. I mean, right now the fire department could vote to say we want to spend five hundred dollars on buying a new radio. So if it was a town fund, they would have to say we recommend that the town spend five hundred dollars. They couldn't just spend it. Right? Well, what we do is when the um, when the conservation commission comes to us and says we're putting up a new sign at trail whatever. They go out and buy a new sign and they have it come out of their budget. That's their money once the town is approved. Right. Their money. Okay. That's theirs. All right. Well, let's. It, it sounds like it can work. Yeah. Like it can work either way, unless unless either of you feel uh, feel well, differently. I, I, in the in the short run, I think it's going to make the fire department feel better keeping it the way it is. But um, in the long run. And I will confirm with Rob that he's comfortable doing it. And if we need to call it the fire department auxiliary fund or, or whatever we call it, we can do that. 
the, how much do they make in stipends per year on a regular basis? It, so it's it varies. So it's it's ten dollars per call per hour or part thereof. So if you go out, you get called out at six o'clock at night, and you get back at seven o five, you get twenty bucks. We do we pay that twice a year, um, and we get paid for uh, business meetings, trainings, work nights. Um, currently, we don't pay for like the, the two guys that are taking firefighter one, they're not getting paid. We pay for the class, but we're not paying them an hourly stipend for going to that. And are the checks coming from from Dorinda? They come, yeah. 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 Do they take it's, out taxes? It's all out of, yes. it's out of the, yeah, budget. It's all out of right. the yeah. budget that's approved by voters. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, you know, it, it depends. And, yeah. I mean, some, some checks can be 500, some can be 700. Okay, I was just a, curious. A six month period. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on call volume and whether yep. you're up. Oh. It's a higher call volume. And, and they'll get a W 2 at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. The firefighters do. Yep. Okay. Basically, you're for the public The same as July 1. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, a, a day you know, if it, if it is going to be dissolved, it makes sense to come right down and dissolve it like on the last day of the fiscal year so it's clean and because you, you have to file I think one form yeah. um, with the IRS. So if if the fire department submits a budget and the select board approves that budget, they essentially hold control over you know the spending of that budget as outlined for approval. The uh, question that I have revolves their fundraising money and as that comes in that's dedicated fire department money but there's no real approval for any of that. And they can spend that as they see fit. They don't have to propose a budget or anything like that. They can still move forward with whatever. It's there. It okay. would be there. Right now, what we do if a donation comes in, we just turn it over to them. But what we would do is then put it into their account. Yeah. So they have full control over yeah. any fundraise, yeah. fundraising yeah. that they do and, and what they do with it. And that. usually when we do fundraising, we specify what, what that fundraising is for. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah. it's not just for a general fund. You've got something in mind that you're you're right. fundraising for. Yeah. Like okay. We did, like we did uh, not that long ago, we did a gas meter. You know, yep. um, we we reached out to the Vermont Community Fund, or excuse me, the Middlesex Community Fund, and looked into getting a grant for handheld radios, um, because the ones we have are quite old and outdated, and. Uh, Actually, they finally got back to me, and okay. um, we have we have all but a thousand dollars of that nice. guaranteed to us. Ooh, so we'll just take a thousand dollars out of our raise fundraising that we did this summer for them. And yeah. that's great. And some of the the fundraising that we did um, is going to go towards the seven or eight hundred dollars over the seventy thousand for the, the air packs because yeah. we we didn't initially budget for. Um, Eye lenses for people like yeah. Eric that need glasses. So, uh, yeah. That was one thing. Going to the bus here <laughs> every time. Every time I'm used uh, to it. And Jeff, and and some of that money was going to go toward a propane meter, correct? Yeah. Hold, hold on one second, Scott. Go ahead, Scott, go ahead. And then some of that fundraising money was going to go toward. We we're trying to, going to try to get one or two propane meters. Was it Jeff? Yeah. So we're looking at in addition to our multi gas meters can do propane, but it requires math. Um, they make propane specific meters and we feel that it, it would be prudent. We've been to propane calls, usually it's a, a burner on yeah. without it igniting, but having a specifically dedicated yeah. meter means we don't have that. Yeah. And it's more, it more um, sensitive mm -hmm. than the, our meters. So that's the kind of, we're that's buying what, those little pieces of equipment that didn't mm -hmm. make it into the budget process. It's like, oh, we can buy this. Piece. Yeah. yeah, I think it makes sense to me that, you know, that was just the control of the fundraising money that it was free for you guys to kind of determine what, what your needs were. That was yep. mm -hmm. where I was going. So. Yep. Yeah. The insurance person is set, hers is more from, if you guys, if somebody was to get hurt or something and they sued, if there's two entities, they could sue the fire department and they could sue the town. 
where we're being one, it, you know. So it's like a, so the liability. It's a liability unfold. loss on possibly for both, and so that's how they're looking at it. She said that you know we don't want two claims in for the same thing, mm -hmm. and um. And I think there's some exemptions or limits to liability. Be. For, I don't, we didn't get town. into a lot of detail, yeah. but those were her recommendations. So. And who, she who said at um, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Susan no, Lee was Lee. it the underwriter? Is she an yeah, underwriter? She's an underwriter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's the head underwriter. I okay. Believe. Okay. And um, so Susan Benoit. Susan Benoit. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so. Well, that we was, should. We should. Actually, I mean, you can see from her, she told me that if you want to see this is the feedback verb. This was the initial feedback she gave me. And then I called her to clarify because if you have to pick option A, B, or C. And currently we're on this C. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah, don't yeah, want yeah. to form our own fire district. So. No, we do not. So that, that was B. We so, definitely do not. Um, we definitely do not. Right. So that was, you know, and I told her that you wanted to keep it um, for, uh, you know, fundraising purposes and things like that. And she said that as the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department, that's you know, you're sending the same message on both sides. Yeah, yeah maybe it's a maybe it's a name change that does it, but I yeah. I think it is not it is not uncommon for fire departments and some other municipal entities <laughs> to have you know separate right. They do funds, it as an auxiliary or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. So I think, it, but that may mean changing your five hundred ones because it's you know you're organized under the Middlesex right. Volunteer right. Fire Department. Are there additional benefits that I'm not seeing is to continue operating that if they have complete control of the funds uh, that they're that they're fundraising for underneath I the think, town? I think it's Randy. I think it's a moot point. Yeah. I think it's just a a comfort level thing for the fire department during the transition. Um, and assuming we can convince those who need to be convinced that it's okay, and we can make a name change if that's the yeah if that's the key to it. I would I would recommend that we start out. Plus, I would also say that I'm hoping we're going to say, and I don't know what the magic date is going to be, whether it's going to be January 1st or December 1st or November 1st or whatever, when we say, okay, we're now one, it would make sense to at least keep the 501c3 until the end of the fiscal year. Um, it's just cleaner that way. So that gives us, that gives us until July 1st to, uh, and likely after that, to decide. Yeah. 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 Do you have do you have any idea what the fund balance is now? What you have in your treasury? Yeah. <laughs> we have a money market account that I believe has probably I don't know, ten thousand between checking accounts. And probably somewhere that was Yeah. 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 I'm trying to remember. And the other I thing, I look at it once a month, and I look at a lot of numbers. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, and I'm just, you know, this is sort of off the top of my head, but I mean, the other thing to do would be to um, potentially figure out a good use of those funds and spend them down, and then start fresh with a new entity. But I don't know that that even makes sense, or you know, keep a thousand dollars or something and put it into the new entity. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure that's not a problem. That's yeah. not a problem. It's just doing it wisely. <laughs> but the 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 big the big part of this is you will officially be part of the town of Middlesex, which I would venture to say, if you ask uh, if you ask a group of people in town, probably most of the people think that's what it is right now. When I when I've talked to people about it, they've said, "Oh, really? It's yeah. a separate organization? Yeah. I didn't know that." Mm -hmm. So yeah, people have anyway, seen stuff so, up. Right. Right. What, well, what is it now? <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right. So any other thoughts or concerns? Fire department, board members? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I did well. say to Peter one day that I wanted to do a home cooked breakfast in the spring. And I'm willing to help with it. We have no stove. We can do it around me. Oh, okay. In the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Just an idea. Now, if you can get JD Allen to come to the pancake, that's the way to do it, Cheyenne. <laughs> I don't think we would have that many people. Oh, I was just thinking of big okay. bowls, like that serves a hundred people, maybe. Three, three <laughs> trailers <laughs> with six trailers on it. I'm not really sure. And the alarm does not stop. Uh, uh, I, I, think no, that, that, I think that is a little beyond. Yeah. yeah. Let's just start with the rotation in the big bowl. We got to see what. Do you have, well, do you have anything that. else? Uh, no. Uh, Liz is welcome to come down another training if she wants to. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, with the new uh, air packs, right? Yeah. I don't think she wants to ride in the back of the rescue again, though. <laughs> But I, I mean, the one thing in all in all seriousness that I that I do want us to continue is the the monthly update process and from time to time i don't know what the time was i think we said we were going to try and do it once a quarter and then of course we haven't done it again but we should actually have our meeting down at the yeah. fire department i just think that's good yeah. for good for a lot of things mm -hmm. so uh with that i'm going to declare the public hearing on the fire department merger with the town closed and we will now start our regular meeting. Look at this, we're only two minutes behind schedule. And guess what? The first item on the agenda is scheduling a date for a possible merger of the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department within the town of Middlesex. Action possible. You've already heard my thoughts. I don't know that it, I mean, it should be the first of some month, but I don't know why we wouldn't do it. First of November, December, I was going to say January is because the the officer the officer elections run on the annual guy. Yeah. So if you do it January first, it, it, okay. It, that's that's good enough for me. We have the election, election on the first Tuesday of December, and then yeah. the back in January. Huh? January. Yeah. 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 Perfect. I'll move that we make it okay. effective. Uh, oh, January. I shut okay. The speakers off. Okay, so it has been moved and did you get that, Sarah? No, because the um, date was the date. I heard Jeff say on January 1st, but he moved it. Yeah, Bill. Well, Bill did it who seconded it. Nobody yet. Yeah, Victor. So I thought Victor oh, did. Victor oh, did. Yeah. Jeez, it, was, it was really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Victor. Victor. Victor, yeah. So it has been uh it has been moved and seconded to merge the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department within the town of Middlesex governmental structure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Gentlemen, it's a done deal. Thank you and hey. congratulations yeah. to everybody. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Hi, Zach Grant. Just wanted to listen in on the meeting. That's okay. Oh, okay, of that's fine. That's fine. Um, hey, I'm sorry. Um, that was pretty easy. <laughs> Only took us two years. That's all right. Considering yeah, we could get rid of Welch Park, you'd be doing really good. Oh I'll just throw that out there. There's always this. There's always a spike that comes, isn't yeah. there? <laughs> and boy, you were right. I actually reached out to our fearless president this week. I haven't heard from him, and I haven't heard from from Halpert either. But anyway, or not Halpert. Um, that's been the ongoing story, though. You know, yeah. Reach out and don't hear. Anyway, reach out and don't hear. Um. <laughs> Considering a request from Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice and other service organizations We're to rescind the board's decision on September. Thank you, Gotta get the change for okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Jeff slash Ken. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll start over. Considering a request from the Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice and other service organizations to rescind the board's decision on September 18th. 2022 requiring petitions of 5% of the voters for articles 
on the town meeting requesting more than two hundred and fifty dollars. So, Sarah. Well, um, how many how many people have we heard from? One Central Vermont Home Health, and she was okay. That's the only one. But she said that she she said she was. Uh, she, um, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I can go get through the minutes and get her uh, name. But her request was whether or not the board would consider merging uh, petitions, allowing uh, you know one organization to multiple organizations to be on one petition. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she asked if the board would reconsider its decision. And um, I said, "Well, you can come to the meeting." And here we are. She's yeah. not here. I don't and like that. Not multiple from... organizations on one petition. That's it's weird. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. How I don't like it. Vote on them separately. Yeah. So we did have. I mean, the only thing I would say is there were only three of us at the meeting where we made that decision. So I don't know, Phil. You weren't there, and Liz, you were not there. Um, if there was to be a reconsideration, I would think it would come for one of the two of you, but not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, I'm no. I'm firm with my stance. I believe that you know it, if. If folks are are looking for the to the town for money, um, they should expect support from the town, and the petitions are the show a show of that support. So, yeah, right. my personal uh, vote would be the same. So, yeah. the only thing the only thing I would say, and I and I and I said it at the meeting when we talked about it before, was is two hundred and fifty dollars still the right number? I mean, it's been two hundred and fifty dollars basically forever. Bless you. Now, when I look at the list, and I was just looking at it here, Paul, did you have something? Thank you. It just says Paul's iPhone. Paul Seminary. Okay, he's he's since muted himself, so I'm assuming he doesn't have anything to say. Um. Well, I mean, to it, even if we raise it to what, like 400, they want more than 400. They're looking, you know, to. No, but I'm, I mean, so, uh, so I'm looking at the list here and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, right. 22, <laughs> 22 <laughs> were at the 250. So you can bet if we raised it, they would all, all immediately go to the raised amount. I mean, that's like. Right. Exactly. This puts a little stake in the game. Yeah. And yeah. gets also, like you said, Phil, support from the town, right? I mean, it, I mean, from people that right. say, yes, I agree with this. Yeah. I mean, they're going to vote yes on it, but. Right. Yeah. The only other, the only other comment COVID that they I didn't have. Want to, they didn't want I, to have to go and ask for signatures. We went, yeah, it was COVID. I mean, that's I, what we yeah. did, but the, is that why they still think that? I think they enjoyed the time of not having to go do that. And right. Oh, really? So the only other thing I have to say about this, and I've said it before too, is for many years I did the Central Vermont Home Health and I did Central Vermont Economic, I did like three of them. And in those good old days, you could go stand inside the school where it was nice and warm and you know maybe attend a couple of basketball games or whatever, and it was pretty easy to get 75 signatures. Right. Um, I don't know what the rules at the school are now. School is open. So you can you can be inside, okay? Yeah. Because standing down, the other thing I did when I was doing it was stand in front of Shaw's, and maybe one out of a hundred people would be okay. would be a Middlesex resident. It's just there aren't that many, you know, times or places to get those signatures. But it, I, usually two basketball games and a couple of couple of evenings when the cars are pulling up to the parking lot, and I'd get my seventy five signatures. So it's not they make it sound like a sound like an awful thing mm -hmm. it's not that awful and the other thing i would say is you have a lot of good conversations with people when you're doing that and it's a good way of promoting your organization you know they say well what does that organization do oh i didn't know that you know oh well you know anyway yeah I, you know for that reason for that reason it, it's a good thing for them now is it hard to find volunteers to do it yeah, yeah it is but if you want your if you want your money uh what what does sarah mean by towns have gotten rid of it anyone can just put on write a letter that's what the woman told her that's but not write a we, letter saying we we want to just put on it without the petition without getting uh town residents they just, make a request. they just make a request and then, and then they they're put on the ballot yeah but i'm saying that's 
I could put anything on the ballot. Right. I want to go sit at Red Hen and have coffee every Friday and I want the town to fund it. Right. And I could get that on the on the ballot yes. to and I stay less than the two fifty and it's just kind of like thrown on there and grouped yeah. in and no, nobody understands. I, understand I give that. it some fancy name and nobody understands what it is. And I'm enjoying coffee on the, the town residence I mean, every is, Friday. Is, you know, there is their there, fancy brewery fund. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the that's, brewery, that's a bit fund. extreme, but you know, it's yeah. um, there are is, organizations can, yeah. that don't have much to do with us who will ask for the yeah, the 250. But really it's about support. It's showing yeah. that you support these organizations. It's not the money, and I know this from Capstone, 250 doesn't no, doesn't do anything for us from even 10 towns, right? It's like it's more about the um being able to say the that message you that you support them right yeah. and that and that we do you know then turn around i mean it takes us we have to get a lot of work in to say we don't even ask middlesex but like you know x number of people were um served from this town there's a lot of work that goes into that as well just to show the town that that we yeah. did work so um i would i would not change i would agree yeah. that I think you need to get the voters, that percent of the voters. That would be my. We need a motion. I don't. Yeah, only I if think we, we can just so. take. I just don't think we gonna... need to take any action. Right. right. Yeah. Um, Unless Sarah, do you want to have something in the minutes? Or we move that we are not going to rescind? <laughs> Is that a possibility? I, don't, I, don't know. Know. I mean, you guys made a decision. It seems weird to. To say how we have a motion to stick by our decision. Right. Yeah, that. it's just yeah, let's we can that. just, just note it in the it. minutes that we've decided not to rescind it. Yeah. I'll, I'll move that we pass over um, the request of Central Vermont Hotel and Hospice to rescind a uh, decision of September 18th requiring petitions with 5% of the workers. Okay, so well, there's a second. Does that send a different message yeah. though to pass it over? It I, I would rather the minutes reflect that the conversation was had and um, we're, we've just decided not to rescind and it's not- Yeah, and we actually have discussed it. So we haven't yes. passed over it. Okay. So, so would you amend your sure. motion? A uh, move that we uh, do not rescind. Right. <laughs> A, neg a negative motion. But I don't think we even need a motion. I, I don't think so. I, want comments. I yeah. think it's yeah. just recorded in the minutes that, that, that discussion was had <laughs> and the board, to take action. the board decided yeah. not to take yeah. any action. Yeah. I think that's fine. Got that, Sarah? Yeah. It's funny how we bumble over stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what, what, what I... <laughs> what I try and think about, and I know, Randy, you read the minutes carefully and others do as well, but have the, it clear in the minutes what really happened. And saying, if all you say is you pass over, it's like we didn't even right. look at it. Exactly. Whereas saying we discussed it and made this, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think it's, I think it's better. Um, considering a request from the Wrightsville Beat District for ARPA funds designated to Middlesex, mm -hmm. action possible. I mean, and this is another one, Colin O'Neill didn't uh, show up. So she just kind of sent an email saying, would the board be considered giving uh, some ARPA money to us uh, to be um, going to the towns that are, you know, part of the Wrightsville Beach District? And no, did no he ask for us an amount? He did not. And what use? Well, I would, get, I would get back to him and just say, you know, if you're requesting funds, you need to request the funds in writing and say what the purpose is. Substantiate. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I invited him to come to the meeting. Yeah, well, that might have done the same thing, but he isn't here. <laughs> did, so. did they um, tell you that other towns had actually allocated me, money to? I asked for that okay. specifically. I think you asked me to have yeah. that. And so I didn't pull you off. I asked him. But I get a re no response from that. Okay. Okay. So no answer. All right. All right. So that takes care of that one. Treasurer's report. Hey, hey, hey. Dorinda. Um, I emailed everybody a draft copy of the audit report. Um, I uh, I briefly read through it once. I haven't gone through it in a lot of detail yet. I, I told the her same. that the same time. It, we would not take any action to approve until our next meeting. So that gives you guys a couple of weeks to review it. Mm -hmm. Um the question I always ask is, did you want her to make any kind of presentation or anything like that? Or 
I mean, I guess you probably should read it first and then see if you need her to come in or whatever. Were there but any, there were serious no findings? Deficient, no, no, no I nothing went, found. I went through yeah. it. I did nothing, nothing jumped out at me, but I didn't, you know, I, I quickly. And if I recall, you had made comment that she said this was yeah, she pretty tight. It, and, and she said it looked really good yeah. this year. And that, um, yeah, yeah there was that. no comments. And um, so, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I would just say in the past, unless there was some issue of controversy or concern, that when the auditor comes in, they say, oh, yeah, you know, here is your revenue. It was up this much. Your expenses were up this much, down this much, blah, 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 blah. Any, <laughs> any yeah. questions? Well, I can pretty much figure that out for myself looking through the <laughs> yeah. looking through yeah. the audit. Now, if they have negative comments in there, if they have concerns, right. then that's a different kettle. Which he did two years ago. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But so I would say, but let's let's let's, look let's make a point of, of looking at it. And if anybody thinks, uh, why don't we leave it that if anybody thinks it would be useful. To have her come in, let Dorinda know, and we'll have her come in. And I think that's on the agenda for the 18th, correct? We're going to have. Well, you guys have to approve it, fine, yeah. and then yeah. fi and then I <clears throat> then she prints the final. Copy. Yeah. Okay. But um, and uh, so. And are we? Um, how how many years do we anticipate using her before we? Well, finish? so after the first year, I was ready to jump ship. Um, <laughs> but the. <laughs> After that, then we went through three bookkeepers. Um, so I didn't want to keep making, I thought we would be better off staying because it was some consistency there. Um, and uh, so we can go out to bid um, if we want on it. I can tell you in attending the last um, clerk treasurer's meeting, that some people, some towns are paying upwards of twenty thousand dollars and more a year for these. Um, our bill this year was ten thousand. So, which but is, is it recommended though to switch every five? No, years I mean our really? last auditor. I think we had for probably twenty years. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. I know we switch ours. Uh, that's why I'm asking. When you, you when you when you ask your auditing firm, is it good practice to change? They always say yes. Exactly. And I would say four yeah. or five years is what they generally yeah. uh, generally recommend. But you know, we but are not a we are not a Fortune 500 have, company, we and we are not capstone no with right. I just want to make sure we weren't breaking any rules. No, 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 no not. Not. I think we were with Bill Iacovoni for probably. Oh God, yeah, everybody had for Bill, Bill had everybody had Bill yeah. for God knows how many. Years well, the other thing, the, the other thing I would tell you is so the so the bad side of it is you're not supposed to get too friendly with the auditor. Okay. When we find out. Doreen has been going out for cocktails with the auditor every Friday. Yeah, we, we might want to we might want to have concern, <clears throat> but you know, as long as it's an arm's length type thing and whatever, having a good relationship. The positive thing is once they have confidence in the bookkeeping system and the oversight that the treasurer is giving, you know, they don't look quite as hard to find problems. I would tell you in my experience, you know, they're comfortable, and that's a good thing. Now you don't want them to be too comfortable. Yeah. But comfortable means less time, which means less cost, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I think we can hang in where we are, but let's 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 all look over the audit and see uh, see what we think. Yep. Um, I also provided you tonight with the budget status. Um, so nothing, I mean, we're not too far into it yet, so there's probably no big surprises. Um we are, you know, we're doing pretty good with, uh, I think right now, I don't think there's anything troubling here at all. No, I noticed a few that if you're just, we're looking at percentages, you went to and then realize, oh, we didn't budget for that. We didn't and, budget for that. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. So it, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, These people that were not Florida. Yeah. yeah that's oh my right. God. And we just got the new Blue Cross Blue Shield rates. Ooh. They're up 10.55%. It's just about what we expected, more than 10. So, um, yeah. So that's all the good news I have. Yep. <laughs> cool. Do you remember what we budgeted for next year? 
I can tell you right. Oh, we haven't gone into you know for a current year. No, no. Well, yeah. half it's always half right, and half. Right, so. it's always half. We took in. I mean, we could. We gave a it. pretty good bump. I think. I think we put in a little bit of caution, a cushion, knowing that it was probably going to take a substantial yeah. jump. Yeah. The other thing that really impact it, it, impact is you know by changing of employees it's changed whether we have as many participants in the plan so um yeah. so there's a difference there yeah yeah so anything else i think that's it <laughs> when do we pay the um color covered library i don't pay them until after we have you know gotten i mean we've only gotten one month's one tax payment thing in um, um yeah. so i wait till we have our substantial yeah. Amount yeah. Of, bigger amount yeah they don't you know they'll get it but regency where would you like to since you've already passed over this it has to be why she's not in tonight's meeting Usually, it's over. It's over. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Unless he has some dramatically new uh, information. It's the same. Uh, oh, you know, it's like one of your members of Slack board would discuss our request to be excused from the petition process this year. We are looking for level funding. Looks like we do not have resources between staff and volunteers to get signatures with the pandemic. Maybe if volunteers have not returned or are still afraid of potential risk, our work is very important. Um, no, 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 no information. All right. I will tell thank you. Okay. You're all set, Dorinda? I think so. Okay, thank you. Highway report, update on town roads and equipment, approving signature of VTrans Better Roads grant for 22000 to aid the highway department bringing town road in compliance with VTDEC standards. Gentlemen. Center Road update. Um, paving will probably not start until the 10th. We got to get our sorry. Um, so that's that. The milling is done. So it's just a matter of waiting on. The milling is always a big improvement. Once yeah, it is. is. <laughs> once, once they do that, is oh, this is okay. Why do we need yeah. to? Why do we need to put down the pavement? Yeah, because the road is unraveling. Yeah, it is. It is unraveling. and he even said we've got to hit that right after we open it. But you know, right? Well, you don't want to pave when it's pouring rain. So yeah. hey, this week is beautiful. I don't know if you haven't noticed. But we're not on the agenda because they have contracts. See, we don't have a contract in. We yep. don't have a specification in. They could care less. They're, they're finishing up their state work. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. The trucks. Trucks are all good. I got the, uh, they said the trade in value is still the same with the yep. Western Star, which is awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, the Freightliner's back. Uh, that was, they had a, oil sending unit or oil sensor issue. Um, the grant process for the salt shed that I was working on. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I need from you guys is a letter of support sign. I happen to write one up. Oh, <laughs> how convenient. <laughs> I've got the one from the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission already. Um, so it's this is for a grant. This is for a grant. Yeah. So I'll I'll read the letter. Well, thank you. Too. <laughs> Dear Mr. Gowan, is that how you pronounce his name? I believe so. Yeah. The select board of the town of Middlesex is writing you in support for the application for a new salt shed or salt containment. Until this year, we have been able to store our salt salt off site. However, this is no longer an option. There is a need now for a salt shed that is able to store an adequate amount of salt while avoiding runoff into surrounding streams and wetlands. The town would also like to acknowledge and accept the 20% match and the financial responsibility of future maintenance costs. The town of Middlesex is committed to preserving the environment while maximizing the transportation system. Building a properly constructed and sized salt shed contain slash containment building, we believe will help accomplish this goal. Sincerely, Peter Hood, Select Board Chair. Thank you. 
Nice. Gee, you wrote a wonderful letter, Peter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Didn't I do a good job? <laughs> That's a really good letter, too. Who made that letter sign? What? Mr. Goodrow or Good Phillips? So Allen, G O U I N. Which department? Like a Vermont Agency of Transportation, yeah, 219 right. North Main Street, Barry. Thank you. No, it's okay. Nice letter. <laughs> no? Is there a motion to uh, sign that letter? Do we need a motion? What? Do we need a motion to sign think, the letter? I, I think so. Well, you're, committed, I think the you're committing money towards support. this, so. Yeah. So okay, but we're not talking about the 22,000. We're talking about salt shed right now. Right. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a letter of support for the salt shed. For a grant which is application a 20% for the salt. match, I think. Yes. Is what okay, but it's just not on this. The, do we care? He's doing it under the highway report. He's doing it under the highway yes. report. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. I'll move we'll get to the support that letter. Okay. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Okay, thank Go you. Ahead. So that was Liz and Phil, Sarah. Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, sign this letter of support for the salt shed slash containment facility. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you for doing that, Eric. And how much are we asking so, for? So the latest quote I got. Um, Would you give a copy of that to? I will. Sarah, just so yep. she has over. I will. Yep. Yep. Uh, is from a company called Iron Horse. Um, they're out of Massachusetts. They're the closest people around that do that. They have a building quote of thirty-six thousand dollars and a foundation quote of thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, and then that's not it. No, though, that's not including the pavement that we would have to put down. Yeah, that's probably like, another so you're probably you're probably looking at about seventy six thousand dollars. Yeah. Um and we'd be looking at twenty percent of that. Yes, which is fifteen, 15 and change. Yeah. 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 So and who's the grant from? The state of Vermont. Where are you gonna cite this? Yeah, right by there. So out back, I believe there's room. Okay. If you get the salt, you get the sand pile here and it goes out back. There's there's yeah. room to the right. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. Before you do anything, you got to get a zoning permit. Uh, yeah. Well, we haven't even gotten that far. Yet. I don't yes. know. I just want you to do <laughs> property line at school. So. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, that's where we're at. I actually just said that we're seven Did you? Right. Good. <laughs> How's our new employee doing? So far, so good. We, good. Uh, we cleaned. Uh, the Wood Road Bridge today, so John Ray, I'll be happy. Well, we'll fill the holes in probably tomorrow or Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> so, why is it that we can't get a surface on that bridge which lasts? Is it just the nature of the concrete that's probably. in the bridge deck? Probably. It's just coming apart. That deck moves every time you drive over. It. Yeah. Actually, I know. Yeah. You know, like if you want to go, if you really want to get it accentuated, a uh, really good feeling, go down to Montpelier by the Grand Union and stand on that one. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Pioneer Street Bridge is worse. Yeah. That that does that does kind of the sideways wobble. Anyway. Oh, those bridges, Grand Street one. Yeah, the Grand Street one is it maybe even worse than that. Mm -hmm. Um. Anything else? You're good. So, I thought you were. Oh, we've got to talk about this other grant. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I'm sorry. Before the the our new employee Rick, right? Yep. Uh, he's scheduled to start class Monday. next week. Monday. Monday. Yep. Awesome. Yep. yep. Right. Okay. Right. Approving signature on the Vermont. VTrans Better Roads Grant for 22000 I think we need a motion to uh, authorize me to do that. Whatever. Yeah, but uh, tell us what the what the grant is. Oh, it's for... And what uh, the m -m -m match is. Oh, it's, it's, um, it's for like uh, going to AANR stuff, like putting stone uh, in ditches, uh, right. grassing or not riprap so much, but yeah, and stone, and then uh, check dams, stuff like that. It's for, it's for all our segmented segmented roads. Yeah. 
And if you understand that, it's, he does, I guess, but it's, it's a different, you know, we have little segments that lead to, to a waterway. To a waterway. Right. It's within so many feet of a waterway. Yeah. And it's also pitch related. Well, right? just, just the road, just the road in general, it's, it's within 100 feet of a waterway. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. most of Brook Road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, in reality, it, it, you know, the whole road affects, especially if you have a hill, the whole yeah. hill affects everything. Yeah. It's all washing yeah. down. Right. It just, washes off the road into the ditch, the ditch, then it yeah. runs down through and then runs into the brook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there runs specific into areas? The river, which runs into Lake Champlain, and there you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, there is. Are there specific areas that this yes. is targeted to? The exit segments. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. There's actually a little map. That Which has to be updated. But I mean, out of that, out of that grouping, uh, are there specific areas that are targeted, or is this just a general? No. Like, so what happens is there's an assessment done on all of, all of them, okay. and then that determines well, what needs to get done. Yeah. Remember when we had uh, discussion last spring with Jim Ryan on Bold Up Road, and uh, yeah, and then uh, Ryan Ryan McCall, Ryan McCall. Those yep. are the guys. Those are the guys that. Walk, you know that monitor. So they work with you guys, and they're going to say, well, "We want you to touch this area up and right. whatever." Right. Okay. Ryan McCall only comes in when when there's trouble. Trouble. Yeah, he's the enforcement. <clears throat> right. I do have um, something to think about with with this permitting process as well. Um, I had a meeting. I think it was last week or was it last week? Last, last Wednesday. Week? Yeah. Um, and they talked about the coming, it's done in five-year groups, right. and the, the next five-year group is coming up next year, the 20th, which is why we're going to sign this. Right. And um, in the past, to my understanding, I don't know, I wasn't here for, for the beginning of this, but um, I believe, I think it was the Central Vermont Planning Commission did the assessment for us for, for a fee, yeah. or they're no longer going to be doing that. Um, so we're going to have to figure out how to do that. And they have um, free apps that has the map on it and you can mark on it and do it yourself. Um, my thought is maybe we could think about maybe getting an iPad to do so. And you can also do asset management with that for your culverts and everything else. It's something certainly to think about. Yeah. And we yeah. can do it ourselves. We need one. Yeah. Is there a subscription fee or anything like that for the app? They or? told me they were free apps. Right. Wow. <laughs> it's not often to do that these no, days. No. <laughs> it might be free for the first 30 days or 90 right. days. I, I, that's just what they said at the meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So I apologize. I need to leave. So I'm going to turn the rest of the meeting over to my deputy. Oh, do we have are we done? We didn't move, move. We didn't. We didn't. To give Victor the authority to sign the grant agreement. Uh yep. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Made by Randy, seconded by Phil. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, but we need to approve the minutes, otherwise we can't because okay. All right. Well let's oh, let's quickly yeah. uh approve there or have a motion on the minutes of, of uh, no, that was the 18th. No, the 18th no. is the next. Uh, oh, you're right. It was the 20th. 19th was yeah. the Monday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, was there a motion on the minutes? What? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Well, they We're approving the, the minutes at the way, last meeting. Otherwise, you won't have a core. Are, are we done? Done? I had another question. I think, well, wait, on, on the okay. Group. All right. Okay. Stop. 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 Are Stop. Go ask, ahead. Are we going to ask the question that we talked about? Sure, you can ask. <laughs> has to go if you just approve these minutes because there are only one, two, three. Oh, well, can we go back? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. We'll okay. go back. So I move to approve. I the think minutes. we did it. Okay. Randy okay. moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nobody's Second. opposed. Second. We approve the minutes. Has to be. So, there. so Randy, the other the other thing that's on here is an update on the yeah meeting that we had with with Ruben and then what the next step should be so yep. you can you guys could talk about that absolutely okay great I'm sorry I apologize it's great to be here in person you need that no nope, I got mine okay all right um so let's go back to the question that you want to ask 
thick. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, this is kind of difficult for us, but we would we've talked about it. Eric and I have talked about this. Must have been part of that other. We don't. We don't want to infringe on anybody's First Amendment rights to speak whatever they want to speak. Just asking the select board members get asked a question pertaining to the roads, roads and highways that, that be deferred to Eric and me. Oh yeah, I responded. That's for my response. Yeah, and so you said even that's the twenty two thousand. Okay. You know, no, I'm fine to do that. I just don't want to ignore it. I think this is just email. a copy for you to look at me. Like right. when, I, when somebody had emailed me, oh, okay. I don't want right. to think okay. that All like right. I yeah, not, and, you know, it's not just you. I mean, no, it's, it's in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that way, that way, yeah, the, that way, the communications all equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really fine. Consistent. No, yeah, certainly. I mean, we who who should who would it be preferred? Like, just either, say I'll send my email. Or, and yeah, or yeah, or see both. Yes, yes. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Have a good evening, everyone. You too. Take care. Bye. Have good. fun. Good to see you again. I'm returning my pen. Is it a retirement party? Yes. Have fun. For you? No, I'm done. He's not retired. <laughs> it's for uh, Marilyn, Marilyn Miller, who is the has been the longtime executive director of the Vermont Auto Dealers. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. And Noel Johnson Insurance. We were very much entangled with them for many years. So anyway, she's an old business friend and an old real friend. She, she was on one of the school goods when I was superintendent. I'm not sure if which. Probably Berlin. Berlin, yeah. Yeah. Well, not yeah, fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not my favorite thing. Right the party Good evening. Anymore. I prepared my speech. There you go. I'm supposed to tell a joke or a story. Those are the same thing. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I tried to. She's yeah. laughing in the other room. <laughs> Have a good evening. I remember this Bye. politically correct thing when you tell the joke. Is there anything else you guys want to cover since we rushed through that well, on the road? I, I, I've got everything. Can I add something to this? I don't know how anybody else feels, but I think that went back to this thing you just approved or talked I, about doing. I, I think if Victor speaks, it she should be speaking as a road commissioner and not speaking for the select board. Yeah. We have a very big problem with well, individual people kind of expressing a select board what's portrayed as a select board opinion when it's not mm -hmm. right right the so, interpretation the interpretation well, and, yes. and, and if that's i mean i can answer all the no but i just think that we need you know because it is a five member board right. and if it's a question that needs to come before the board it should come before the right. board absolutely board. Yeah. and not and in judge so as long as you know i'm not Saying, you know, I'm just saying that it, oh, it's any, it's any well, one of us. anybody, yeah, yeah. Right. but especially for Victor because that, he has because dual, he has a dual role, and I think it, and I, and I have to be very careful of that, and it's been a, it's been a learning curve, for yeah, me. right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. the um, I mean, the other thing too is Peter gets lots of phone calls, right, right. that we don't even know about right. that he right. gets on a regular. Basis. Right, and, and 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 no matter what you go, right. what I go to to other. Uh, co uh, commissions. Can't say it. No. Oh, I, I don't you know what you're going to say. I don't know if you're <laughs> <laughs> right, and it's not. Yeah, I mean, they do. You are correct. They do ask him. They think that one, one that the person. chair runs the board. I, I speaking was, the reason, for the board. I, well, the reason I stuck my head in is that Peter was talking to me. I didn't hear what you guys were talking about. Did we get on another topic that uh, would be in the minutes? It's a continuation of the topic that we were just on. That if someone re if someone sends an email or calls a board member about something like the roads mm -hmm. in particular, yeah. I mean, it can right. be anything, but the roads, to have them get in touch with Eric and or Vic. Right. And uh, did you follow up on the, what, uh, the conversation I had with Halpert yesterday? Um, no. no. Okay. No. So I, well, I'll just I mean, it, kind of, but you do it much better. Um, in discussing with the uh, Rob Halbert, our town attorney, about the road, the highway ordinance, we were discussing the idea of meet a one select board meet member meeting with uh, um, another member of the community. So if a member of the community comes to the board and brings an issue, and the board as a whole makes a decision, or it doesn't make a decision, or says come back later with more information. That select no select board member should then be meeting with either member or members of the community one-on-one -on -one afterward, if about especially about that issue. 
So if they call and say, well, I'd like to talk to you about that vote that you had, you say, well, you can come to the board. Absolutely no one-on-one. -on -one. And the reason why is, as, as I don't know, Halpert said, once you have that discussion in public, the walls of the public hearing go up, so or the public meeting go up. I'm not sure what that means, but I think the general idea is that now it's a public issue. So the even though your intentions may be the best as a select board member, it can be perceived by people of the community as a backroom deal. Don't do that. Right. So, so once that, it's voted, it's done. Once it's even brought to. So right. let's say I come okay. up and I say okay. I don't like um I don't like the fact that there are German shepherds in Middlesex, and yeah. I and the board says well, we're not going to vote on that. And then they call up Liz or you know say you and say well can we work on that German shepherds? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. So an example might be the gentleman who came forward and said he wants to turn that class three road mm -hmm. four road into a class three mm -hmm. road. We could not have a convert. I haven't yet, <laughs> but yeah. but yeah. but the, we would not be. It, it would be advised that we, if he saw us on the street and started talking to us about it, that we would say, "Come to a meeting. It, come, come to, to a, a meeting. meeting. Go on the agenda. Okay. Come to a meeting." That is so not what happens in small towns. <laughs> I mean, let's be truthful, right? But that's I mean, true, but I think yeah. that's, and if there's really any way, I mean, ethically, uh, ethically, and legally down the road, it's always mm -hmm. good to say you never had that one on one conversation. They came before the board, it was in the minutes. Just but Liz, you were so ahead, ahead of this because I stopped you in the grocery store one day. And, I remember that. And you said, we'll have to come to a select board. See, you were way ahead of us. I remember Good that job. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so anything else from the road? Yeah. No? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so uh, updates on meetings with RV Technologies. Action possible. Randy, tell us how that went. Um, so Peter, Dorinda, and I met with Ruben from RB Tech. So um, so we discussed some of the communication issues that we were having and uh, the new contract. We looked at the old contract. Um, uh, it felt like a lot of this really stemmed from a lack of understanding of, of how the bills um, were generated and what was included in our monthly service fee as opposed to what was outside of that service fee. Um, the long story short in regards to that is that that monthly service fee essentially covers all automated services. So things that just happen um, on a schedule um, without being driven by human action. The contract that we have includes on um, that monthly service fee includes two hours of technician time. So something that's driven by human interaction, um, so to speak. Um, that rate is then um, carried over and billed separately for anything outside of those two hours. Mm -hmm. Ruben let us know that those two hours essentially are always, almost always, not always, but almost always taken up by some of the health check that they do on a monthly basis um, and whatnot. Um, so in theory, it's their policy to undersize our contract so we're never overpaying and we're not pre-purchasing a bunch of hours that are traditionally billable outside of that monthly service so that if all goes well, the town isn't um, uh, overpaying for that service, so to speak. Um, we've discussed uh, the need to have more clear communication chain um, and uh, asked for a single point of contact um, or a primary, I shouldn't say single point of contact, I should say a primary contact along with a, um, uh, a second person that's attached to everything. Um, at that meeting, we discussed um, possibly the treasurers being involved in those two people um, as essentially that role is responsible for uh, paying bills. So if they're kept in the loop and CC'd on all the email communications and whatnot, that uh, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of, out of that job. Um, and um, I think the other thing we talked about is 
uh, the benefits of doing that health check in person and allowing them to give us like a monthly summary. Um, and we base that monthly visit on those two hours that the health check takes. We also talked about the potential of doing uh, a mid-month meeting as well, if we ever found that was necessary. But I think uh, in that conversation, we left it as let's let's look at the monthly to start and, and see how that progresses. Um, so I think for the for the board, um, uh, we've it's on our plate. And actually, before I go there, do you think I missed no, anything? No, that summed it up. But the one thing he did say out of it, and the reason I'm telling you to stay behind is he's asking everybody to leave their yes. all the computers on all the time. Don't and I don't know if you have the capability of doing that with your laptop because isn't that what you have a laptop? Mm -hmm. I just I close it. You close it, but they it can't goes to sleep. So I should leave it open, but it didn't. Yeah. So is there any way to stop this from going to sleep? Because the problem is, is like they tried to do an upgrade on his machine. They can't access the machine when he's not there. Yeah. And so nothing is being done. His happens to be one of the computers. My laptop at home seems to be the other problem. Um, do you take your it, it can be in a sleep mode. Yeah. So closing it. Should would should put it in a sleep mode and they can still access it remotely they can because i know he tried yeah, to... i don't shut it off like, right. i don't right. power down well he couldn't it. get into it so that day he was installing the new microsoft what was 365 hmm? what day was it? it was a friday it was a friday and you guys weren't working and he couldn't get in well, and was it recent uh probably a month ago now because every once in a while I do, it that calls for updates. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Right. And, I, and I, I update it, and sometimes it shuts down. Right. Yeah. And maybe it happened, that happened then. I don't, I don't normally shut it off unless it calls so for So you think updates. he could still access it if Should he just close it? Yeah, I have at, at my work, I have uh, a Windows machine that is uh, almost constantly in the sleep mode, and they, they push updates to it all the time. Okay. Um, and actually, when I come in on a Monday, sometimes it's off because they pushed an update and, and it does it, it, it does shut it down. Right. So you may find that when you come in on Monday morning, you may have to, you know, start there's it no, back there's up. No, yeah. so. There's no power button on it to start it back up. Once you open it, it powers up. Okay. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I couldn't find a power button. <laughs> really? Oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> well, anyway, so that was the <laughs> other... <laughs> But so we're going to, just so everybody's aware, we've got to let the listers know, Sarah know, but all the computers they're recommending to be on 24-7, basically. Yeah. And if you take them home? If you take them home, they want them, you know. Well, like, them so so yeah, ideally, no, they're they, on and connected to internet. To right. internet, yeah. Okay. So I'm the only one that really has one, you know, that does that, that takes it home. Um, I'm working my internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's where a problem ran into because they were trying to do the upgrade oh. on our from my house, and it was like we did discuss the fact that at this last upgrade or update, we didn't have notice that they were going to be doing that. Um, so they're going to make an active effort to try to push a notice to us to say, "Hey, this Friday, please ensure all your computers yeah. are left yeah. on or whatever." Yeah. But as a matter of habit, Ruben did ask that we not shut them down. Um, and they'll they'll work on being better about saying, we're coming in to do this. Please make sure that, you know, it's it's on or whatever. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, I can speak for myself. I felt much better coming out of that meeting um, with a little bit of clarity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think I think there were definitely things to work on on, on both ends. Um, and, could definitely feel a strain in the relationship. Um, uh, so I think um, as far as the agenda item here goes, the action that is possible or likely here um, would be uh, assigning those folks as the as the primary contact and the secondary con contact. Um, in that meeting, um, 
Peter said that he was happy to to deal with it in the interim, but he would rather not be the person dealing with it on uh, an ongoing basis. Um, so I think I think that's a discussion for for the, the board here between Middlesex. RB Technologies and the town of Middlesex. Right. So who in the town of Middlesex would be the? Doesn't it make sense that it would be like Sarah and Dorinda? Yeah, probably. Um, okay. These are the ones in the office. Yes. Um, Where Sarah? I know Sarah has expressed uh, an interest she not did. to be that person, <laughs> and uh, Ruben expressed, you know, uh, the same interest. Okay. So, but he doesn't like. People. Um, he would I, like someone. Yeah. What about? Oh um, God! If I have to deal with people. Sarah. I'll be bad. Um. We we talked, and I mean, I think my personal feeling is I think the treasurer needs to be one of those people. Yeah, we yeah, haven't really sense. discussed the other person. Okay. Um, but you're right. It's hard for somebody who's not here. Yes. To you know to deal with that as far as issues and. Uh, okay. Well, Cheryl's <laughs> okay. Cheryl's here. Cheryl's here. Cheryl's here. It's the but same email a... address. Though. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like yeah. you know she has one for assistant clerk, but I you know it's kind of like a duplication of what she gets. And ideally, it would be somebody that is receiving email on a daily basis yeah. because right. what what Eric, can't happen. <laughs> It makes sense. What what shouldn't happen is, you know, um somebody like myself who I may You're look not. at look at the email uh three, four times a week, but not every day. Yeah, yeah. Um no, it shouldn't be. and and they should have the ability to to have the time to respond. Um well, the other thing too is, I mean, I've, I've tried to do that from time to time, but I don't really necessarily know what the issue is. What then the I'm, issue then is. I'm calling around or emailing other people to go, uh, right. how do I respond to email, We can have um, Dorinda and Cheryl be the, the people, we right? Could also, because they're sharing the email anyway, and then it's... I don't see an issue with that. Is it, I mean, <laughs> do you see an issue with no, I mean, that. I I feel comfortable because you know Cheryl's here, you know, day in day out normally. Um, so that is you know, and I just think as you know, everything ends up at the treasurer's desk, and so that's why it seems to be the natural place that because there's going to be a bill coming through right. for everything, and so um. Is, so we could do Cheryl's email and my email that way if one gotten missed or something yeah that's what i was just gonna say is is yeah. instead of using the same email so if you, you both use, use the treasurer email no we can i would use her assistant, assistant clerk, clerk email yeah so that there's two you know yeah. two emails attached to it if for some reason because it really needs one to be somebody who would also set up another you know mailbox that just might be support now then someone has to maintain it Let's yeah not do yeah that. I think well, we're, you know, let's just try it. I mean, it, we can always change it. Yeah. If, but the key is, is it's got to be, and even Peter admitted in the meeting that he doesn't check his email every day. And, yeah. you know, yeah, he so he's, you know, he's not good about it. Well, and even if you check it, having the time to yeah. deal with right. something yeah. is important. Right. Yeah. And so. I think the issue nine out of nine and a half out of 10 times, it's a problem within these computers right here. Yeah. So somebody really, I'm not in the building, but I do read every single email that comes through. So you can go, you're fine. I just wanted you to know yeah. and keep your Thanks, computer Eric. on. Thank you, Eric. Um. So, uh -oh. and overall, fire, Dorinda, no. you, um, you're you fine with all that and you felt good about the meeting as well. I felt good about the meeting. Um. The, I didn't understand my, when we get billed for all this health check stuff, mm -hmm. I thought that was part of the whole yeah. contract. I thought it was too. Yeah, I, that was my understanding. And evidently it's like, you know, you know, so these two hours that we pay for every month, over half of it is eaten it's up just by that. regular monthly monitoring. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, probably an hour and a half out of the yeah, two so is easily tied up in that. Yeah. And Peter signed a contract for the next six months, right? Yeah. He did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So did you, did we? Well, it's it's signed for a, a, a year. year. Okay. With the understanding that with 
written um uh with a written request we can cancel uh okay. but it's within i think 60 days notice basically mm -hmm. um i think everybody recognized the fact that uh even in an optimal world we'd never get service within you know a reasonable amount of time and we just can't hang hang out there with nothing so um i i will say i felt much better ruben sat there and he did you know respond to all of our questions um uh it, sure. it felt yeah. coming out of there that we were in a better place so Good. anyway i mean i think stuff kind of got kind of loose during covid it and did and the other thing that um sarah did go out and survey other towns yeah. as to who they were using and i think she passed that email yeah, on to did. everybody yeah. So there is, you know, if somebody really feels we can do this for so long, and if we feel that it's not getting any better, um, but it was a pretty open and frank discussion, and you know, um, come, yeah, good, heart to heart, yeah, therapy technologies. All right, do we want to make a motion about assigning Dorinda and um, Cheryl as the first and second? I I would like to make that. Motion? I would support that. Yes, I would make that motion that. Uh, uh, Dorinda is primary um, as the uh, treasurer. treasurer, and um, the, and I would take Dorinda's name out of it. The treasurer right. is yep. primary, mm -hmm. and the assistant mm -hmm. clerk is secondary. Okay, got that, Sarah? Mm -hmm. She's quietly back there. Second. Uh, okay, all those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. It'll make it Thanks clear, though, it doesn't prevent anybody from calling in. Like if Sarah has right. a problem, right. Right. she's supposed to still call in with her issue. It's yeah. just the tickets will go out. But too. first, restart your computer. Who who <laughs> made the second on? Who was the second on? I just fell. So. Um, while we're on RB Tech, we just give you a quick update. I spec'd a new computer for Sarah. Uh, and I've got a quote back on that. And then I, I spec for a new server and I have a quote on that. Um, I sent them to Holland uh, to look at. He said, we're fine with the server, but he wanted somebody else at RB to look at the specs on the server just to make sure that either we weren't buying too much or we're buying. You know, he was so good with the computer and he was good with somebody the computer else. to be want somebody else to look at the server. So I said, okay. We kind of talked about the server and he was saying that he thought we could make it through to the next budget year. We should have it in our budget for this following this workshop that we're entering for the budget session. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to include the cost of a server. Right. But he didn't think it was something that we had to do before like beforehand he said unless you just come in one morning and it's gone okay. but he seemed to think that it was pretty stable and they but... didn't have the time to deal with it right. until march anyway so really oh. between march and july there's a window that they could come in and do it this this budget year um but he said you know it looks stable enough to get us okay. Well, I mean, they kept giving us. Well, they kept, and that was that was all part of the discussion. I said every time we turned around, it kept saying on the ticket, "server issue, server yeah. issue," and so I said, "Wouldn't you think you would come forward and tell us? You know, if we didn't respond to this, you would call somebody and say, hey, you guys need to get a right. computer.' I mean, that's what server I really thought quick. we were at. Uh, like but, I said, you know. it was a pretty open and frank yeah. discussion. Yeah. And, and the the one piece that was missing he said from their normal operation is you know annually they try to come meet with the select board right. and give right. kind of an overview of here's what you used for last from last year here's what we're looking at for the upcoming or into the future you know um the server uh you know 17 to twenty thousand dollars roughly was his his dartboard estimate is just throwing a number out to put into um into a budget um so they um higher than what you spent way higher okay. i mean we're not we're just not that big of an end yeah and he said he did say that he was being very conservative with throwing that number out and i think he he used 15 to 17 and i said so if we use 20 we're covered um i think is how that conversation went but um he did say that it's it's a big enough it's a big enough uh, cost that 
this would fall into the CIP. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought know, we only paid like nine thousand for our last that, one. If that, yeah. yeah. And he's basically saying, you know, uh, five year life cycle, four to five year life yeah. cycle is what he's estimating at. So um, that was something for that sure. I was going to pass on to the budget committee for the CIP to update yeah. that. Um, because right now we don't carry anything for that so, for the server, right? We don't. I thought we did. I don't. I don't believe so. We didn't have it in there when Christian was helping build it yeah. as a potential replacement cost. Okay, so um, are we all set with the conversation about RB Technologies? Mm -hmm. you okay. guys vote, you, you we vote. voted, and um, yeah. Okay, so uh, the next agenda updates on recent meeting with architects. It's not quite, it wasn't really a recent meeting. It was um, it was questions that the architects have asked of Dave Magida uh, regarding the RFP. No, they came here. We oh, they did come here. Yeah, okay. we did. We had it here. They were oh, here. it's a tour that so you the did. Tour, yeah, yeah okay. So um, I, I'll just give you a quick overview. We had probably kind of a sign-in sheet, actually. We had about six firms come. And which I was more than I expected. David McGee, I can't say enough great things about him, how wonderful he was. He's a, nice guy. He's a really nice guy. So we had when well, yeah, about six firms. Um they're the we tried to get they were getting hung up on, well, do you have another site that you're thinking of? And and David was trying to keep them just on this, like just tell us what this can do. So um I think the, they would like a little bit more time, they're probably not gonna get it. And uh, that's it. I just wanted to tell you, six firms came through. David answered all the questions. They kept drifting off, wondering how else, what kind of cost comparison. David's like, don't do a cost comparison. Just tell us if this thing. I didn't know this place was 6,000 square feet. It's like a mansion. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And in terms of um, just conversations, thanks, Sarah, for that update. In terms of conversations that... Um, We've had via email with Dave and Sandy Levine, who's also um, been a big part of this um, process. Um, is that so? In terms of the timeline, um, they have until I think it's October 11th. We extended it a week. It was October we, 3rd, and then we extended it to the. We gave 11th. them until after the holiday. After what? Well, oh, Wednesday. That's right, the 11th. Yeah, yeah, the 11th. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we get to the Friday. After. Okay. Okay. And um, you know, on the 14th, Indigenous. Dave thinks he's going to get about four solid proposals of which then we will um, we will review. So, you know, and I and obviously I, I can't look at those and say, I think this one's the best. Right. I'm going to probably defer to Dave, but we'll all have an option to look at these four proposals or however many do come in. Um, and then in terms of dating. So like this is um, what we're thinking about um, is. Uh, let's see, the schedule, um, a selection of the architect. Now this might be hopeful, but the selection of the architect. So if we have a week to look at them would be October 18th. Um, and that's what, like, what are we on now? Well, so it should be the 21st. Yeah, so if, yeah, if the proposals are in on the 14th, a week yeah, would okay, be the yeah. 21st. Yeah, so we won't, yeah, so we won't, I don't know why we said that. Um, selection of architect, hopefully, oh, this was, I think, a, so it'll meet, it'll miss your second October meeting. Yeah. Um, so now you're into, so that was, must have been before November, you pushed it, so. Yeah, he sent this email today, so I'm a little bit, I think he might have misread um, the dates. The one in November? November 1st is the first meeting. Okay, let me just go down here. Um, yeah. Not deer season, second one is. Yeah, it would probably be 11 1, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the 11 1 would be the day that the we 15, choose the uh, architect. 15. Um, And then the architect who's ever chosen is going to want to sit down with us for like an hour meeting. So this may have to be a separate meeting, or it could be potentially a meeting with just select people from the select board. Um, if it doesn't become like a full open, you know, meeting. Um, so, because the timeline is really tight. Um, he has, uh, let's see, let's go back to this email. Meet with the select board. Um, 
they'd like the firm to lead a discussion with the select board to assure that the board's expectations of what is included in the finished project are well understood. Again, that sort of reflects back to Sarah's comment that they were like, well, do you want this and this? So we, so they'll have a conversation with us. Um, and uh, there should also be a meeting with the board well in advance of town meeting day for your firm to represent its work up to that point. This will help assure that there is a consistent understanding of what the finished product will include. Um, and then it says, uh, so the schedule, selection of architect, hopefully by October 18th, but we already know that's now December, November 1st. Um, and he says that actually, if that's not possible, then the selection will be on November 1st. Submission and presentation of deliverables is February 21st. I think he's saying that to get it get it on to the town meeting, but we're not going to have a vote on anything on town meeting day. Um, there's nothing to really like. We're not going to be saying to the voters, "Okay, now is your time to decide: do we rebuild this building or do we tear it down?" That's not the the purpose of town meeting is for us to be able to present to the voters what we've done thus far and to be able to share that we have done this um, evaluation of the building. Um, so it's hopefully they can get it to us by that time. Um, but it's not going to be, a, there's nothing that we're going to be asking people to vote on. Right. And February would be too late for the warning. Anyway. Right. So just let's, yeah, but you could, there's another, there's other business discussion at the end of town meeting. Yeah. So that's a good time. Yeah. So anyway, um, we don't, you know, I think Peter had expressed a little bit of concern that you know, Dave is dealing with big projects that nor you know in Norwich that are you know million multi million dollar projects, and you know he's worried that this RFP is going to come in really high, right, like fifty thousand dollars. I'm like, I think Dave's been communicating with them that you know we're you know our our rough price range of what we're looking for, mm -hmm. and I think that if we do get these RFPs that have really high amounts, we turn it back and we say you need to scale down. Like, give us this, this, and this in your proposal. Um, so anyway, that's where we are right now in the process. Yeah. Um, one of the questions came up about whether or not this is a historic building. I did not know this, but apparently it is on the Register of Historic Places. And it, it is? I was surprised, surprised by that too, but that's why one of the architects said. Um, and if we have mm -hmm. ever taken any federal funds for this building, that I can I can't recall. The only thing I can think is that maybe we, we for example, the lift might have been a federal grant that was came through a state grant. But mm -hmm. I no, we don't have to pay it back. But then you have there are restrictions on what you can do. On the other hand, the other group, the other thing this architects wanted us to look into was uh, whether or not whether there was any grant funding, historic grant funding, like historic preservation grant funding for this. And I didn't know. Right, Sandy has explored that okay, and yeah. um and had conversations with them, but we haven't applied for anything yet. Right. Because I remember um, her meeting with the Vermont, was it the restoration? Yeah. Vermont, yeah. And and so those are but those are sort of, you know, I think smaller grants to, you know, deal with specific parts of the building that you would add in addition to all the other funding mm -hmm. that you're again though, you know, and I think Randy, you can probably speak to this a little bit more. Oftentimes with the historic preservation, you know, you lose other, you know, efficiencies, right? Like energy efficiencies that you can't do if you have to, re you know, if you're required to keep right. your windows That's in, right? right? That right. kind of thing. And so do we want to go down that route of, you know, this, of pre preserving this building? When was this building built? 1930. And it makes but it this, historic. Was there a fire there here or something? There was. It was a fire. I'm trying to remember exactly when the fire was, but I didn't go look at the book. I think there was, I think it was rebuilt in 1934. I think it had been built around oh. the turn of the century and then it was rebuilt. And, that and was, the rebuilt is considered historic? Or do you think the original? I, was, I will, you yeah, know, so I gave my, myself away yeah. by saying, but 1934 is not that far. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was born just My mother was born in 1923. Yeah. And they said, well, actually, anything that's older than 50 years, yeah. and this building is older than 50 years by far. Boy. I know. Uh, there's not much you'd want to preserve mm -hmm. in that building. I wouldn't think so. Now, is there any reason why I can't share these emails with the board? No. 
Okay, I'm just making sure it's that it's not. Here. Yeah. Do you have that page, the letter that I can photograph? No. Well, you know, stop it. <laughs> Does, would anyone like to see the emails that Dave Megida has been sending to the architects, just out of curiosity, sort of like you know what what he's asking? Yeah, I wouldn't, them? I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing you them. Might, yeah, okay. Not that I'll chime Thank in you. necessarily, yeah. but okay. Anyone else? All right, going once, going twice. I'm sending it to Randy Brewery. <laughs> there you go, Randy. Thank you. All righty, so um, orders. Did everyone get a chance? Oh, I had a question. Sure. <laughs> I'm confused. Um, it's been so long since it actually I like, know. Look it's, at it's them. good to look at I know, it's so good. Um, so here are invoices up to 10-4, and the total comes to 151.062. And then there's um, invoices 10-4 to 10-4 that come to 139. Mm -hmm. And I'm signing the 139 one. Is there something to sign? Yes, there was one? two pieces there's, of paper. Okay, there's there. another one for 151. There's, yep, okay. There was two sets of orders in there. Yeah, so the 151 fit one, I didn't see a signature page on yeah, that. Yeah, I don't. Was. Well, I see a signature well, page, Vicky but I don't. signed them both earlier today, and they both got put in there. So. Well, I thought I saw one. I just saw It might just signatures. be clipped in with something else then. I see two 139s with signatures. Are they signed by Victor? No. no. So no. So it's, I probably just have missed it. Let me see. No, one. it was. You know, I'm the Here's the um. Here's the payroll. Well, that's the payroll one. Maybe it's been done. I don't see anyone that made it through. It's payroll. So maybe Peter has it. Is that it? Here, yeah. this no, that was the one that's an edit. Yes, um, I don't know. Um, I know Victor signed them both earlier today. I didn't see it when I, I was the first one to grab the folder, and, you didn't see it? and I did not see it. All right, so, um, <laughs> it's no, the people no, one we have, it's the 151,000. But maybe it's hiding underneath one of these things. Yeah, it might have just got caught in the flip or something. Let me just go through these because I'll look through them anyway. So, okay, any other matters that come before the board? Yes, Vic. Does anybody here um, know if we have any policy that would for permitting? Uh, CD fiber, like CD fiber, if they wanted to bury their cable, would we we require a permit to be within town right away? In the town right away, right? I think that uh, oh. I feel like I've answered this question. What's that? I feel like I've been asked answer this question in the past, like maybe a couple of years ago. I don't know what it is. I know a couple of places, like down in Shady Rail, is underground power, and then McCullough road uh, in front of the freeman property is underground but i don't know what they had to do to get it so cb fiber was asking and i told her i would try to find out i, I don't know they huh i don't know i never heard it sounds nice i called uh our permit guy kevin thompson he just wasn't aware of them yeah i think I would think that you would want to have some kind of documentation yeah. so that we know that there's where it is buried utilities yeah. in that area. Right. That's a smart. I don't see why they want it to. I mean, you saw things so safe and they could find it, but still, well, it's like, like over on the Hill Road. Road. Do you see yeah, anything in there that says the power is there? And it goes from pole to pole. Yeah, right. it's all just your intimate knowledge, your the historic knowledge that you've got, yeah. which is is um, a lot. Your historic knowledge. Maybe wet the answer. Wipe your nose. Is they might. Yeah. I don't need that. Vic, Weck, someone from WEC might know the answer because they sometimes bury lines and stuff. That's a good point. WEC, WEC is the one that buried the point, but buried the, the cable. But I, it, it, even if you didn't need a permit, uh, 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 CD Fiber said that in other towns like Callis, that they went out with the uh, that road farming and uh, 
They looked the other way around. No, I said it went over with the road, highway to farm. Yeah. Documented where they were. Yeah. It's just nice to know. Right. Yeah, I think at the very least, we'd want to map out something. Uh, hey, hey, guys, this is Paul. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Oh, hi, Paul. Yeah, can you speak up a little bit more? Yeah, I can try, Liz. That's, Hold on, Paul. About... I'll turn you up. Yep. There you go. Try that. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Um, in my work with Dubois uh, burying fiber optic, um, you can talk to a lot of towns, Vic. You know, Waitsfield would even be a, a great place to start the town of, um, as well as Waitsfield, Champlain Valley Telecom. Um, I know we, we would definitely have to, you know, get permitting through each town. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, we're, we're digging over, around, uh, under uh, in, infrastructure for the roads and everything. Um, as far as mapping, uh, CB Fiber will have drawn out maps with direct routes. And then they'll have, you know, once that infrastructure is in place, whether it's overhead or underground, they'll have as built plans that will show, you know, if ledge were to alter, you know, a, a projected course, they'll have plans for that, uh, for as built. So, um, you know, talking to the town of Waitsfield and even Champlain Telecom would, would be a good start, but I do think it's going to, they're going to probably defer to the town, um, you know, with all of that stuff, but the town is definitely going to have to watch going forward as far as you know maintenance goes because all of that stuff is is inside the right of way every bit of it so yeah anytime we're doing yeah if you don't want another one off, mm -hmm. that, you print it on i wonder if that if that information is conveyed to i don't know <laughs> Those no, so no, so so the catch with that, Vic, you, you know, obviously, as you know, with dig safe, it's it's the law, but dig safe will only give you where where those utilities are located. And I'll be honest, in in my direct work with them doing locating right next to them, it, it, it's pretty much a racket because they can put paint in the middle of your yard, and even if you hit the utility, they're not going to be at fault. So. Um, they will not give you depths whatsoever. They will only give you approximate location, and they're only going to be able to give you certain utilities anyway. Right. Um, utilities are not part of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it dig safe is not. They they don't have any plans. They literally just clip on. You know, fiber optic is is glass, so it's not traceable. They have small caper, uh, copper tracer wire within the cable core. Um, they clip on to that, but. Um, Eric, as far as you and Vic go, you know, it's most of the mainline stuff is not deeper than 36 inches and any residential stuff that ends up happening, depending how they go, uh, you know, from a pole to a residence is, is likely only going to be 12 to 16 inches. So, so the likelihood of, of hitting these utilities is, is going to be extremely high, like very high. So yeah. just, uh, you know, I, I would say for the town's benefit, even though, uh, it's going to seem like busy work. It's it's probably going to be beneficial to to you guys and us as the town to have a direct hand in seeing how and where these routes are gone and making sure any any new installs that happen or infrastructure upgrades is definitely it'd be worth you guys having a direct hand in it and having all of that information because it it will impact uh, road infrastructure and maintenance. Right. Paul, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is in your in your time as your time as a road foreman, was there any you aware of any permit policy or anything like that where Washington Electric or Green Mountain Power had to seek permission from the town or file something? Does that sound familiar to you at all? Uh, no, and and I remember they had done a project, uh, Vic, uh, Eric. It might be worth talking to Jamie Bulduck, but they had put there is a bunch of fiber optic that goes from Route 12 up Bulduck Road only to a a certain area I, I don't think it goes much past the cemetery there's a um there's a vault right there by the weston's property across from the cemetery and i think that's as far as it goes mm -hmm. um and i think that infrastructure is is it's it's all in conduit luckily uh, it's not direct buried but um that stuff's about three feet in the ground sarah that would have been in gary's time uh but i can tell you one thing kind of if it comes to utilities it's there's probably not going to be a lot of say in that. You know what I mean? If if this is the town votes to have this go through, 
I, I think you're almost you're 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 giving a bit of a you know kind of a open waiver type of thing. Yeah, I know. But Paul, I would have people come in here, like from Green Mountain Power, and say, "Do you have a permit process, or who should I talk to? We're going to be doing something like stringing some wire on Shady Rill, and I'd send them up to the highway garage. I never knew what happened when mm -hmm. they went. Okay. Yeah, they would basically just let us know, and and like a lot of the stuff that the town has, we basically default to to any state regulation or law, um, and anything that is not under state law or regulation, you know, basically the town takes takes on. But anytime something like that happened, we're like, yeah, we know you've got to do what you got to do. The difference is this is a whole new utility, which the town in any of our lifetimes, I don't believe has ever experienced, you know, a, a new utility being put into town. That's that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, probably utilities division that's part of the Agency of Transportation, uh, uh, Craig Keller probably would be able to give us some information too. Wait. Yeah. This is the 139 one. It's the 151 I mean, one. It'd be a shock. Oh, no Do you need the one for payroll then? Yeah, I think any any information you guys can grab from you know from you, the utilities themselves other towns and and then the state vic and eric i think it'd be your best bet but again i would definitely be hand in hand with whatever goes on because it's it's going to be directly related to groundwork absolutely my question is this what is this thank you Paul. 151 you got it guys we'll see you back your printing this is it. Eric. right see you Eric. So where is the place to sign for 151? I guess I'm confused. I am too, because this is what printed out in the report. Is there so this you know this says uh, the invoice is up to 104, and then right. this says invoice is 104 and to 104. Right, just the single. And but so that's payroll, right? That one there is all payroll. No, it has other no, things. Is, it's got all these. That's why I'm confused. Then this is what she sent me. So. I just don't know what's the difference between 151 because there's know. some repeats on here. Like there's, I thought there was um, the middle sex, uh, like the 30,000, maybe not. I, I guess I just don't know what this I don't is know versus either. this. I guess I don't either. Okay. Okay. Let's go through this. This is all the. And I thought it might have something to do with it. But I was like, this is the July one. It's not today. October one. That's why I got it. Report grand total. Then I don't know why this is printing out like this. Right, because I thought I saw some repeats on here, like of things that also were um what is it that were on that 151. It's 151 what? This is 151 like Ambulance. I think it's on here too. It's yeah. a different breakdown. And it's the same amount. It's the same line item, but I think there must be more on this than that's on here. Or something. So maybe we shouldn't sign this. So 11,553.66 is the difference. Oh, there 11, it is. 11,530. Barrett Trucking Company. Did she? I didn't sign a truck. Oh, wait. Yes, I did sign a check for so Barrett. So one trucking. includes the Barrett trucking and one does one does not. So we should not sign this. We should sign something that says 158. 158. And so she didn't print a new she didn't print a new page to go with this. Is there a possibility that we could sign this? Yeah. What up? Well the certification statement's not there, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay. We'll sign it. We'll sign it. It's, give me permission to mail the checks, and then I'll have yeah. you retroactively sign it next week. I'll so ask you. Put that in a minute. Just that the page that you, the page that you have to sign for the doesn't have the right total. doesn't have the right total on it. Okay, so not all orders were signed, huh? Not all orders were signed. Well, but they we were all approved to mail. Yeah, they, they're all approved. But we have to get signatures on them. Right. So the, the one that's everything signed except for the Barrett trucking. So the motion yeah. is they are approving all the orders. And then I just need to have you go back and sign when we get the correct page to go along with it. Because I just. Okay. So is there a motion that we allow um, Dorinda to um, mail out the checks and we will sign uh, the next time we are in town yeah. hall? Yes. I will make that motion. Okay, second. Second. Phil seconds it. Yeah. Sarah, all those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> the ayes have it. The checks will be mailed. See, that's why I want in-person meetings. 
<laughs> so do you have Otherwise, to redo the whole thing or John or do just do one with that, I don't that know. new chest? So there, she sent chest. out the edit list and this, I just went in and reprinted it and- It still came out as 139. Well, it's with her email that she sent to me uh, with the, all the paperwork in it. So she went back evidently and must have edited the checks and then print a new edit list or something okay. because this one is smaller than this other one. Right, and yes. that's that specifically that that amount that eleven fifty five is that truck that one. one is the Barrett trucking. All right, right. great. And Problem mystery it, solved. Mystery solved. All right, it's six forty five. I think I should be chair in the future to get us out of here earlier. What do you guys I think? think? So. <laughs> uh, the meeting is adjourned. I'm for that. And. Uh, Thank you all.